Well, yeah, we're doing lots of communions today, so this is the third one. <coughs> but um, So yeah, I'm honored to uh, be able to give you guys the communion message today. Thanks for having me. My name is Dave Seidel, uh, for anybody who doesn't know. Um, and so, yeah, since I'm the last one, I don't want to keep you guys too long. Um, but I do have a little bit to say, so I'll just get right into it. Um, you know, whenever we're taking communion, we always want to remember why it is that we're doing what we're doing and not just go through the motions. And, um, you know, I think that is one of the hardest things for us to do um, in our Christian life is to remember, you know, our right standing with God and what God thinks about us despite some of the things that we do. So, you know, it's always good for us to go back and, and remember these things. So, um, most of you all in this room have probably heard a lot of the main stuff that I'm going to share about, but like I said, it's always good to remember, and don't forget, we also have my massive online audience as well, <laughs> who uh, may not have heard this message before, so, so, yeah, um, when I was preparing the message, I was reminded of a situation that I actually encountered when I uh, was taking communion in a church a while back, so this is when I was first kind of starting my walk with God, and um, that's what I kind of drew out right here, to help save us a little bit of time. But, um, so basically what uh, was happening here is they'd have their pews, you know, where everybody would be seated, and then they'd have everybody come up to the front and receive communion from the priest or the leaders, and then, you know, they'd have the usher kind of release the first row, and then they'd come over and go sit back, and then the next row would come, and so on and so forth. Now, I was a, I'm a routine kind of guy, so I would come at same time every week and I would sit at basically the same place I would sit right around here and there was a gentleman who sat right there where the X is and what he would do throughout the entire time that we were having communion it's he would just sit there and kneel the whole time mm -hmm. so he wouldn't go up and receive and <laughs> This person, so if you were this person right here, and he was kneeling down, you had to either walk around him, you know, or jump over him or something, but he was just chilling there. He wasn't moving. <laughs> so, now I just want to challenge you guys and kind of ask you to think about what you think he's doing, <clears throat> how you feel about what he's doing, you know, during that communion time, okay? And I will share my original thoughts. So, like I mentioned, this is kind of, you know, when I was first starting my walk with God, and I would see this guy kneeling down, and I would think to myself, man, this guy is like really, you know, remorseful. This guy is like really sorry for what he's done. And then, you know, I'd start thinking about myself. And I'd start thinking, you know, I've done some pretty bad stuff in my life, and maybe I should be more remorseful, or maybe I should be a little bit more sorry about what I've done, and maybe I'm not worthy, and maybe I shouldn't be going up and receiving communion. So, you know, all these thoughts are going through my head. <coughs> and, um, so I never actually did what he did, not go up to receive communion, but a lot of times I felt like he did, okay? And so maybe you've done that as well in your life. So I just want to kind of, that's my main point, is just to encourage us about not to feel like this guy or not to have any guilt, you know, as far as your relationship with God and, and uh, receiving communion. Amen? Amen. And, uh, yeah, just kind of elaborate on the effects of it and what God's done to remove that in our relationship uh, with him, okay. So guilt, um, you know, as far as guilt goes, if you have it in any of your relationships, whether it be with God or with anybody else, <laughs> it really ruins your relationships. Because if you feel guilty around somebody, you're not going to want to hang out with them, you know. And if you're not going to hang out with them, then there's really no chance to have a relationship with them. Mm -hmm. So it, for there to be a chance to have a relationship, they have to not feel guilty around you, okay. Mm -hmm. Now. That's part of, you know, what I feel like God was saying and trying to accomplish in the cross was helping us reassure us of his thoughts towards us and our right standing so that we didn't have to feel guilt and try to remove that from the equation, you know. So, you know, if there was no cross, if there was no Bible, or there was no Holy Spirit kind of coming to convict us about some of these things, then we might be able to have some doubt. But because of all that we have and all that he's done, there's really no reason to doubt. Or another way to say it is any doubt that we have about his love for us is unreasonable. There's really no reason for it. <laughs> so, um, you know, guilt, how it's brought on is, is our sin consciousness. You know, if you have a conscience of your sin, then you're going to feel guilt, okay? 
Um, and so I just want to lay the foundation with a couple scriptures here. Um, the first one is Hebrews 8.12. <coughs> so you guys don't have to turn there if you don't want. I'm just going to read it. Well, actually part of it real quick. It just says, you know, he's basically saying he will remember our sins no more. You know? Um, and so, you know, when I think about that, I just think of, you know, sometimes you have friends who, um, you know, you'll talk to a lot and sometimes they'll, be talking about something that you may not want to talk about and you know maybe for example <laughs> if somebody's like a little bit conceited and they're always talking about themselves they might be a good person or a great person or whatever but it's kind of like hey maybe we can talk about something else you know so that's kind of how i feel like god is he's like he doesn't want to talk about it you know and as a matter of fact that's probably not even a great example because if we come and repent about something that we've done and then we come again and we talk to him about it like he said he'll remember it no more so he's like what are you talking about? I don't even remember what you're talking about. I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> you know, so hopefully, hopefully you get the point from that. But um, And then there's uh, the other scripture, Psalm 103, 12. And it says, I will remove their sin as far as the east is from the west. Amen. Amen. So anybody want to take a stab at how far that is? <laughs> Pretty far, huh? That's an infinite amount. Yes. He's got a good arm, so he's throwing that totally out of the equation. Amen. Amen. So, um, you know, we can even go all the way back to the garden, you know, and Adam and Eve. What did God tell them? He said, don't eat from the knowledge of the tree of good and evil. Now, why do you think he said that? Did he say that just to try to boss them around or just to have them, you know, to tell them to do something? <laughs> he didn't want, he knew if they ever had a knowledge of that, that they would probably think to themselves that they weren't worthy or that they weren't doing things that they should or that they were doing things that they shouldn't do and all this guilt would be a hindrance in their relationship with God. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what did the enemy try to do? He tried to come in and, dis and he deceived them about their right standing with God. Mm -hmm. Even though they were in right standing, he was trying to tell them they weren't and they needed to do something to get in right standing with God. So that's his whole thing is try to get us into this works righteousness, right? Mm -hmm. So, I have a few stories here that I can tell just personal experiences that'll help hopefully try to drive this point home. But, um, so when I was growing up, I played uh, a lot of sports and my favorite sport to play was basketball. And um, I was pretty good. I used to play on the school teams and everything. And, um, but I would also play, you know, in the neighborhood with a lot of the kids and stuff. And there was, uh, happened to be a few kids who were just a year younger than me. And so, you know, when we were growing up, they always want to try to prove themselves you know, against the older guys in the neighborhood and stuff, and you know, it'd be a feather in their cap if they could beat you, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, it's kind of a lose-lose situation for me, because if I lose, <laughs> you know, I'm not really proving anything, or they win, but if I win, I'm really not proving anything anyways. So, but what would happen is these guys were, let's just say, a little bit more confident in their abilities. They would want to play not only just for pride, but they would want to play for money, okay? <laughs> now, I'm not condoning this, but I'm just saying this to illustrate the point um, since I was older than them I would usually beat them and you know when somebody has pride like that they're not just gonna say you know okay you beat me you're better than me what do they want to do they, they want to go double or nothing right <laughs> so they want to go again and they want to go again and they don't think they're gonna lose but they do and they end up racking up this debt that they couldn't pay okay now these are my friends you know and I, and I would say okay, we'll just pay me whenever you can. And we lived real close by, so it's not like they were going anywhere. But, you know, what would happen is, next week would come around, and I would call them up or go over there and try to see, you know, what's going on and hang out with them. Well, guess what? They were nowhere to be found. <laughs> and it doesn't take a rocket scientist to understand why, right? They owed me money, they didn't have it, they felt guilty, they didn't want to see me. <laughs> it's very easy, right? So. But that's the same thing that happens with our relationship with God, right? If we feel guilty, we're not going to want to hang out with Him, and we're not going to go and, and seek, him, seek Him out, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just, it can be very subtle at times. We may not really recognize it, but it, you know, has a, a really bad effect on our lives if we let that creep in. Mm -hmm. All right, so sticking with the uh, basketball theme, um, you know, when we would play a pickup game, we would play not to, you know, a certain, not for a certain time period but we would play up to a certain score so you play you know up to 11 by ones and twos or 21 by twos and threes and so you know whenever you score that final point 
it kind of be like, now what? You know, <laughs> he's going to score that final four and all the stuff that they were saying against me or thinking of they were thinking that they were better. It's like, let there be no confusion now about who's the best, right? <laughs> and so when I think about that, I think about how God was kind of saying through the cross, now what? <laughs> you know, it's kind of like his Jesus' death and resurrection he seated Jesus at his right hand in a position of glory and honor. Mm -hmm. And now it's like him saying, now what are you going to accuse man about? Because mm -hmm. this is what I say about him and this is what I think about man. Mm -hmm. All right. So, you know, when all, any of those voices try to come against you to try to say that you're guilty, all you have to do is say, now, is that true of Jesus? Well, then it's not true of me. Yeah, okay. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's not prideful to think that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know a lot of us, and myself included, <laughs> been kind of indoctrinated with that that it's you know like this guy kneeling down at the pew to think that it's humble or to think that it's holy to say oh no brother not me you know I'm just a sinner well you know you have free will to think that if you want but that's not how God thinks about you you know so um, so that's good and that's the victory that he's won for us you know and that we can walk in all day every day you know um, and I would recommend it it's a beautiful thing <laughs> So, um, and then another quick story here. Um, I have two little nieces. Um, they're six and four. And I went home to see them over Easter a few weeks ago. And so I was hanging out with them the Saturday before Easter. And, uh, you know, they're talking about the Easter Bunny coming, right? And so they're going to get their chocolate. They're going to get their candy and everything. And they're all excited. And, you know, I was just joking around with them. I said, you know, you guys are lucky you're getting candy because I used to get toothpaste and a toothbrush. You know? <laughs> I don't even know where I came up with that. I was just joking around with them. So uh, the, old, the older one starts joking with the younger one, saying, ha ha, you know, you're going to get toothpaste. And, and it started off and she was just like, no, I'm not, no, I'm not. And then the older one would keep egging her on until it got to the point where she was like, no, I'm not going to get toothpaste from the Easter Bunny. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason I bring that up is because she was fully persuaded of her right standing with the Easter Bunny. Right? Nobody was going to tell her that she wasn't getting some chocolate from the Easter Bunny. <laughs> That's how we need to be with our relationship with God. Nobody should be able to come in and tell us that we don't have right standing with God. Amen. Amen. So, um, yeah, I think that's about all I have time for. But, um, yeah, I'll just say a little prayer for us since we already received, I guess, uh, a few times. But, so, yeah. Um, we take the, the body, we just say, Lord, thank you that Jesus' body was broken for us. Thank you for making us whole, for restoring us, for cleansing our conscience from sin, providing this platform for us to come to you without any guilt, Amen. for complete healing in every area of our lives and bodies. Thank you for provision that you've given us and supplying for all of our needs in abundance according to your riches and glory. Do this in remembrance of you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, and then we'll take the blood and we'll just say, Father, we thank you for your blood, which is the forgiveness of all sins, so we don't stand guilty before you. Our conscience is clean. Our life is hidden in Christ. As we partake in this blood, we partake in sinlessness, a consciousness of the truth in Jesus Christ. So we just thank you for it. Amen. Cheers. Amen. <laughs>